Welcome to the Love Cars on the Grid podcast, your global motorsport roundup with me, Tiffany Dell and Paul Woodman. Welcome to Love Cars on the Grid, your global motorsport roundup, where we look back on the weekend of motorsport all over the world. In Austria, there's a head-to-head with MotoGP, the Ducati battle raged on. In America, there was plenty of drama from both IndyCar, IndyCar NXT and NASCAR, which was a day late. That's why we're a day late. While down under, the supercars didn't disappoint. But in the news, what have you got in the news? There's quite a bit going on in the news, actually. I've got a couple yeah, of I just think We should just start. It's not Formula One, which will come to or anything global. It was that last week we didn't report, I forgot to report, on the Pro Bike British Rally Championship round that had been won by uh, Chris Ingram. Uh, and I just think it's important. He won the Grampian Rally this was there sort of two weeks ago in his Toyota Yaris to, to get a point behind the championship leader, William Creighton, um, with two rounds to go. And it's just, I think, you know, we should support the Pro Bike British Rally Championship because we desperately need to get some young Brits up in that, you know, world stage. We've got Alfred Evans, but, you know, we've got Ford put a young Latvian 20 year old out to be a superstar of the future. Then Toyota in Finland put a young Finn out who did an amazing job. Um, because we don't have a rally GB anymore, you know, we really are disappearing off, off the world rally um, scene, you know, in terms of young drivers and stuff. So, uh, you know, I mean, I mean, Chris did everything he could. He ran himself in WRC2. He finished third. I think we had a couple of podiums a couple of years ago. Uh, now he's back to the British Championship. So um, let's all support the Pro Bike British Rally Championship, trying to lift it, lift it up a bit. Well, let's talk about um, rallies. There's another rally, I think, this weekend. What is famous? I should know the name. Carnarvon or something, is it? Is it? It's uh, up in North Wales, anyway. And uh, Higgy, Mark Higgins, is going to be in it. It's uh, quite a big thing. So that's coming up this weekend. So there you go. That's a gravel rally because I'm into my rallying now, of course. <laughs> <laughs> what else you got in the news? I'll give you a bit of gossip. Well, Formula How... One, Formula One um, is really, I mean, they've all gone home for Christmas. So they've all got all over summer holidays. So there really is little news <laughs> from Formula One. Uh, but it seems like it's just these three seats to be settled now, really. Unless Red Bull, Red Bull implodes, which you can never trust Red Bull not to suddenly go completely <laughs> pear-shaped in the next, uh, next half of the year. Um, so it doesn't look like anything's going to happen there, which means probably Liam Lawson's stuck out on a limb again. Uh, and Isaac Hadjar, you know, he's about four, he's dominating Formula 2 and so deserves other Red Bull protege. So it looks like Lawson and Hadjar will be fighting over to who does the most simulator work next year, which is all a bit sad. Um, but actually getting out of the track, you know, we think Antonelli's going to go to Mercedes. Uh, Jack Doohan looks the Alpine favourite, which I quite like the idea. Jack gets some youngster yeah. in. And the only other third seat still going is the kick Sauber stroke Audi team where you know who's going to back up Hulkenberg which uh, I fear is going to be Valtteri Bottas which I don't really want to see again you know poor Teo Porsche the Alpine reserve driver he's been left on the bench again oh of course Zhao's in there with his 60 million dollars apparently so maybe Zhao will get it but um, so the only two definitely out are K Mag and Sargent that seem to be out and the only one definitely in is Ollie Behrman with Haas so which Not and Hadjar's, Hadjar's been so much better than, than Behrman. Um, and Max Verstappen's wax lyrical at the moment about Hadjar as well, saying how good he is. Oh, has it? Yeah. Well, and who knows? Who funny knows that whether Max Verstappen saying how good Hadjar is, and then your mate, Carl Larson, on the other side of the pond, saying that he's a better driver. He thinks he's a better all round driver than Max Verstappen. Um, what? Yeah, That's not, he's not a big bragging boy. Where have you picked up this story? He might have mentioned it. He's, yes. you know, it's, he's, it's he's, all over the news. Um, all over <laughs> motorsport news, and 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 his reason behind it was there's no way that Max Verstappen could go and win the sprint car and win the Knoxville Nationals, or no way he can win the Chili Bowl. But that's that's true. It, but that is <laughs> well, it, he probably could actually if he did a, a little. If bit he testing. does enough, well, that's the yeah. thing. You know, all these. You know, when you see a, there's always the debate: is it is a rally driver better than a racing driver? You know, rally drivers got more talent. It happens always, this sort of... I'm just surprised Larson's come out with it because he's got a modest character. But, um, yeah, when you specialise in a sport, you know, it will take a brilliant natural driver four years to, you know, if Verstappen went rallying, it would take him four years, maybe two years to, to get up onto pace. But he would be on pace eventually. I don't uh, think it would take him... Was... It wouldn't take him two years. It certainly wouldn't take a rally driver two years to get up on pace... To the staff. Well, 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 even Sebastian top... Loeb, Loeb couldn't get on the pace at Le Mans when he first started. So he was behind. Loeb's never been. 
when they did the race of champions and they used to do this every year the rally boys always did better the rally boys did really, and what really well. sort of format of driving was the race of champions eh? was it was it like a big grand prix track was it more like a special stage of a rally excuse me yeah but so okay, it suited look, the rally drivers of course it did but you know so you little, can't compare look at the little doctor um when he i mean you know he's doing uh, uh lots of uh, four wheel stuff now and yep. um, and he's competing incredibly well. Lots of it's lots taken of guys... him two years. He's still not the quickest That's in his BMW years, GT3. That's not he's four still years. not. No, he's coming. He's getting there. He's getting there. And of course, a GT3 car is a much easier car to be near the brilliant driver. There's well, much, let, there's, there's, let, there's let me tell you from control. my extensive uh, track and <laughs> rally experience. <laughs> but genuinely, it is easier, in my opinion, to go from from rally to track because a track. All you got to do is learn the track, and and it doesn't change other than maybe the weather. Of course, when you race, it's different. Racing is uh, something that's uh, um, you know you can't well you can teach, but it's it's very different. But it's easier to go that way than the other way. No, not really. Don't you don't agree? No, because I mean, <laughs> racing you have to be absolutely on the edge of grip at every corner, at every moment, at every lap to succeed as a racing car. The rally boys have this amazing natural car control. But, you know, when they go through a stage for the second time, which they do now, it's most rallies, they're about half a minute quicker. The first time through, they're not on the limit at every corner of every stage. They couldn't be because, you know, you, you go slightly over the limit, you're in the trees. So they're not right on the limit. It's a different discipline. And, you know, Larson did amazing well at Indianapolis. I mean, OK, that's a bit of a NASCAR track, you know. But, uh, but the skill he's got when he goes out, he does this chili bowl, this, you know, this midget sideways on clay at you know, <laughs> ridiculous angles. And he does it all week. And he comes, he does it on Thursday and Friday, then comes the weekend at NASCAR, wins on the NASCAR. And then he goes to Indy. He is a natural talent. I mean, I would put Larson's natural talent equal with Max Verstappen's, Valentino Rossi's um, pick a rally driver, you know. Um, so, Rovan Pera, yeah. Pera, you know, the natural skills of all those drivers are exceptional. I would put yeah. equal, exceptional. Yeah. And yes, well, if they move, would you put them? Would you put them equal? Because Max Verstappen is one of the best Formula One drivers of all time. Is yeah. is Carl Larson one of the best NASCAR drivers of all time? Top he's five. He's becoming. He's becoming one. Yeah, he's exactly. Obviously... We're not talking about becoming. We're not talking about the future. I'm becoming a good rally driver. No, no, no. He is now. Yes, of the current generation, he is the best. No, no, of all time, not the current generation. Well, you can't do the all. <laughs> what do you when you not? look at when you look at Richard Petty, you know, winning <laughs> hundred races or something, you know, in a different generation, a different time. You know, if you give Lars another 10 years, he, maybe he will win more championships than Richard Petty. That's why I mean, you can't become the GOAT until you've built up all those championships. Okay, so, so Lewis he... Hamilton is, is the GOAT at the moment. Max Verstappen may be a better driver, but he's got to wait until he's won all those titles to become the GOAT. So Richard Petty is the GOAT. But Carl Larson is a potential goat. But is got he, that? If you got that, is he currently one of the best NASCAR drivers of all time? Is he top five of all time? Well, how do you definition this all time? <laughs> but it's not number of championships races. won, no, number of championships no. won, number of races won. No, just, What's talent? Just, yeah, just yeah. Like, he is yeah. He is one of the okay. greatest NASCAR races of all time, without wow. a shadow of a doubt. That's that's some strong statement. Wow, I didn't shadow realize he was. I just I just thought because oh. you. No, no, no. Hero. Oh no, no, he is okay. he's regarded by all, you know, as the talent. Wow. Good to I'm hear. I'm worn out with that debate now. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get back to mo motorbikes well, are the biggest thing of the weekend. No, no, no. I got some lighter news now because this is uh, straight from the horse's mouth as well. So um most people probably know that uh, Tag Heuer are the Red Bull watch sponsors yeah. and they've just renewed their deal with them so no surprise there however hot gossip off the hot off the press it looks like rolex are, are losing their f1 um uh, sponsorship deal and it may it's going to be one of two people that replace them it's either going to be tag Heuer, uh, as i just mentioned um with red bull or hublot um mm. and hublot is ferrari i guess it must be well, that's the dullest exciting news i've ever heard <laughs> Oh right, okay. Uh, now we can go to motor. Motor GP <laughs> was the was the star turn of the of the World Championship series. Didn't have any World Rally or World Sports cars or World Formula One. Um, and I was just looking. Motor GP actually is in a fascinating state at the moment because I was looking at the at the rider changes. We're doing the Formula One, you know, with not many changes happening. 
And I just had a look up. There's all this talk about who's riding what next year. It's proper musical chairs, isn't it? Uh, it is. <laughs> there are now seven riders will be on different seats. Only two teams have got the same pairing for next year. And that's the, um, I don't know which one it is, or the Yamaha team of, of uh, Rint and Quattoraro. And the Honda team, which nobody wants to ride anyway because they're used to the moment, of Mira Marini. Every other team has got a new rider. Um, we've got this fascinating thing because Marquez took um, the place at the, the factory Ducati. We've got the fact that the Pramac, the run the Ducati, that Martin is now challenging for the championship, they're leaving Ducati to go to become Yamahas. And that's where there's two seats still available. The one might be going to Jack Miller. So there's the Primac, Primac Yamaha satellites. Ducati are dropping down to only six bikes instead of eight. So that's all happening. We've got Mar Marquez, as I said, going to the factory bike. We've got uh, Giantonio is now having the factory bike Ducati next year. They have, they have a third bike. They have one bike um, of the current bikes they lead, lead to a satellite. Um, Aprilia's, you know, got Martin and Bezecchi. So it's just really exciting to look at next year. Um, so we wait and see. Seven new seats. What else? There's only rides going to the Premac rides. So looking forward to MotoGP is still one of the best entertaining sports, but we've got this Ducati domination. You know, the I said that you know next year Giantonio and the VRE 46 will get the 2025 bike, as Martin has now. There's only three of these Ducati 2024 bikes on the track, um, and they're just dominating. But I mean, after Silverstone, we had hopes that Bastianini, who dominated Silverstone, was going to make it a three-way fight for the lead the third man on the Ducati 2024. But it looks like in Austria, it's back down to the pair, the two of them. Um, Enya Bastianini swept it, as Americans would say, won the sprint and won the... It was all a bit boring, really. I mean, sometimes you have to admit, a horrible little track at Austria, which I really don't like, the Red Bull Ring, which sits on the wonderful site of the old Osterreich Ring, where there's still me in a Formula 3 car. You can see on Love Cars. Love Cars YouTube channel. Was Don't it 1976? Me. Was I right there? 70, 78. Yeah. Um, so it's a silly little trap with silly little tight curves. And I mean, qualified, they're all dropped. They've got a chicane to slow them down for turn three. Um, and they're all falling off from the chicane in qualifying. Uh, the main story really in Austria was, was Pedro Acosta, who had three crashes in, in warm ups and free practice. And Pedro's is sort of, you know, he's this superstar we all know and love, and he's going to be a superstar, but he's he's only in a satellite of last year's KTM, which at the beginning of the year was competitive. He was on podiums, I think. He was looking, you know, to be a real front runner. But he's really dropped down the rankings. And this third crash he had, again, when they start breaking the left-hand kink at 180 miles an hour or something, down towards what used to be the Bosch curve. It's now turn four, such as the way of the modern world. <laughs> but you know when he braked a bit too at a hard time, the front just goes from under him at 180, and he's then on his back like a like a stranded turtle going down the tarmac at 180 miles an hour. The bike goes ahead of him. Luckily, the bikes tend to slow down slower, so they go ahead because the worst thing is the bike catches you up. Yeah, um, and just slides down on his back. In fact, it was interesting. In the olden days, they used to get terrible skin burns when that happened because the heat build up on the leathers. But Susie Perry was just about to explain nowadays they have a material when one another comes to just cut, cut in. So I'm not quite sure what they have in their suits to stop the burns. Well, I know the but, suits um, are super space age with airbags and all that. I know, stuff. the airbags I know, but I don't know what this material is. That, it must be a liner there to stop this heat going through I didn't through know that with the, with the heat going through the leather yeah. and, and burning it. Wow, it must be awful. Terrible burns. Uh, but of course, you know, at the end of the race, he qualified 14th, having destroyed one bike, maybe two. Uh, in the sprint, he was 10th, and the Grand Prix was 13th. So it's been a very disappointing second half of the year so far for, for Pedro Acosta. Um, but as I said, we'd hope Bastianini would make a three-way fight, but he was fourth in the sprint, beaten by Espargaro on the, the leading Aprilia. Aprilia's always good in the sprint races because it can run the softer tar and okay. stay competitive. But the long Grand Prix, at the moment, the Aprilia can't stay the pace. So Bastianini um, got third in the, in the Grand Prix behind... Um, Ben, ben, <laughs> behind Pagnaia and Martin. So it wasn't that exciting a race. Um, always Mark Marquez is there entertaining, of course, while he waits to get on the, 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 the latest Ducati. He, he tries to make his 2023 Ducati stay with the leaders for as long as possible. He dropped it in the um, sprint race, trying too hard, as he always does. 
Uh, and the Grand Prix had this awful start um, when he didn't put his whole shot device. I mean, these, it's been banned for 2027, I think. I think they've still got it for two more years. Nobody really wants it at all, but you know, people have developed it and the technicians want it. And so you saw them on the grid with the front row Ducatis all sitting virtually on the bottom of the fairing, I don't know, the, the wheel. It's just on the ground. And there was Marcus sort of flapping about on his bike, looking at was, and the, it was probably only about three inches off the ground. It looks like he's on stilts compared with the others. <laughs> but apparently he had a last minute panic because he had a tyre valve go and they had to put a new tyre on. So on the warm up, he was trying to warm the tyre up and you have to engage this whole shot device while you're still going almost and you have to hit the brakes hard and press the button but he hadn't done it so when they all dragged off the grid poor old Marquez was going backwards with people brushing and he got knocked off with the first I think he ended the first that tenth um and then the story of the race was him coming back to fourth where he was going to be anyway so a bit of excitement there they do look crazy when they're about to take off don't they it's like a launch oh, no. gong they just sit, there's no man, wheelies, yeah. the wheel, nothing. Yeah. The bike stays horizontal and just goes. Incredible engineering, um, though. I mean, I, I, you know, we don't like the way that how technical it's gone. I know. Um, but incredible engineering. What's really. the error? They're, they're going to try to drop the error. They're, they're dropping to 850cc bikes in two years' time and they're trying to hot shield it because they're going so quick now. You know, it's the, incredible. the active error, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Sebastian is back in the lead of the championship now with five points ahead of Martin with uh, nine weekends to go, which is 18 races still to go. So there's still plenty to play for. Top four all Ducatis. No surprise I know. Yes. No, it's just a shame nobody's really caught up with them yet. It's a bit like it's, it's a bit like the Red Bulls in Formula One. You know, gradually they're catching. Aprilia have got the closest so far. And sometimes KTMs are almost there. Uh, whereas Yamaha and Honda, the Japanese manufacturer, just miles behind. So um we need a bit of it's going to be interesting, as I said, with, with this the team, um, the Premac team having so now there's, there's four Yamahas instead of just two. And it's this having more bikes with good riders on them that, that helps the development during the season. Um, Moto G, Moto Two, good news. Jake Dixon has signed for the Mark VDS team. Of course, Sam Lowe's used to race for them, and they won the championship. Uh, the team's won it about three or four times in the last ten years. So he's a very characterful like chap, isn't he? Yeah. he really is. Always a smile on his face. Battle. Always, yeah, yeah, always that wonderful smile. So hopefully a champion in the next couple of years on Mark VDS bikes. He had a really good race in uh, in Austria. Uh, it was an easy win, actually, for Celestino Vietto. Um, or Vietto, Vietti. Um, who won with quite a reasonable gap. But he hasn't won for a year. Moto2 is very up and down with who's going to win this year. It's been like Formula 2 in, in, Formula, in single-seaters. So Vietti, who hasn't won for a year, an easy win. It was a great battle for second place, which uh, Alonso Lopez got a second, and Jake Dixon took third with about a couple laps to go off of um, Aaron Kennett. There was a bit of panic, though. With the last lap into turn one, he was on the sort of top of the curb where it goes from a curb to being a green. And if you touch the green on the last lap, you're demoted <laughs> two places or something. Wow. So you, can't, you can't do a penalty. And they, they Again, stupid track. You know, there were track limit um, <laughs> penalties all over the place. You go over it three times, you get a warning, fourth time. And, you know, stupid tight course, stupid circuit, stupid track limits. Um, are you happy so, with, uh, you're not happy with the track, clearly, but are you happy with uh, drivers in Formula 1 and, and uh, uh, MotoGP, GP2, et cetera, that they can announce they're going to change teams mid-season all over the place? Because... Football, we both follow football, and you can only do it in a couple of parts of the season. You could, uh, the January transfers, well, yeah. and, but it must disrupt the team. It must, and, and if you know that your yeah. mucker's going and he's going to another team, how do you feel? You always want to win well, a psychology. Team. Well, yeah, yeah, psychology of it. I know, you know, with people, it's a bit like, you know, I don't know, you know, you're going, you get kicked out. It's a bit like, I suppose, some color sites of Ferrari. Yeah, but that's one instance in Formula One. Whereas you say there's dozens of changes going on for next year in the middle of the year. But, but it's but not. It's hard. Yeah, you don't really work as a team though, do you? In in uh, on two wheels there, where you would in Formula One, you can hold the other person up and you can do the pit stop strategy where one box yeah. is first. So you don't yeah. really do that in. No, you're on your own. Bikes, your own yeah. Garage. But it was uh, weird because the championship leader Sergio Garcia was 14th. Yep. Championship second place, Ayo Gura crashed in the warm up and hurt his hand. And Joe Roberts, who's been in so well in America, was only ninth. So it was a weird race, different people up front. Uh, but Jake, a good third. Moto three, 
to David Alonso, this Colombian kid, who is, you know, following Pedro Costa to be the next Jeez, absolute he's superstar. He's unbelievable. Oh, yeah. He had his tenth win of the year, and he had to do, he had to do a long lap this time. He he um the other thing they do in Moto Three when they're trying to get a tow, they go around too slowly. You know, waiting to a bunch to catch, and they're trying to penalise them now. If you're seen dawdling, you know, hoping to catch a tow, you get a penalty. So he got a penalty. He had to do one of these long lap things, and so he did his long lap thing when he was running about second. I think dropped a tenth and came back to win. And when he was about four seconds behind the, the front bunch and worked his way up, and then then. When he's because there was a wonderful interview straight away. And he's, I had to do this one, you know. I make big mistake. I'm sorry to my team. It was my <laughs> mistake, and so I had to win this one for my team because my team do such a good job. I do a bad job yesterday, so then I have to do a good job. Uh, Scott Ogden's miserable year continues. Um, first lap of qualifying, he got biffed up the backside at the chicane. Going into the chicane, got knocked off his bike. Um, so didn't qualify. It was 27th out of the 27 on the grid. Got up to nineteenth, but um, not too good. So, so not the the Moto Three race was brilliant, and then the battle for second in Moto Two was good, uh, but the Moto GP itself wasn't the best of racing. Well, like you said, the track doesn't lend itself to it. But um, Alonso yeah. is seventy one points clear of. Uh, oh, is he? It's quite tight from from second place down, but he's seventy one points clear. Yeah. That is just astonishing. But really. this, but this progression again, a bit like Formula Two. I mean, I was talking about those teams. There's only two Moto2 rides at the moment um, progressing into MotoGP. Mm. Uh, Oguro, as I said, who's running second in, in the moment, he's got a um, track house Aprilia ride. And it's funny, he's a Honda-sponsored rider. But they probably, they dare put him <laughs> on the Honda because the Hondas are so bad at the moment. So I think they're like putting him into this track house satellite team on an, on an Aprilia next year to learn the MotoGP rope. So he's in. Uh, and who was it? It's Fermin Aldegaia is going to have a Ducati. He's taking over Ducati, I think, Grassini, which Marquez is leaving. So he's taking Mark Marquez's place, I think, at Grassini. So only two riders getting promoted. So even though it's, you know, you think the seats are changing, it's like Jack, it's a bit like, you know, with Bottas in Formula One, because Jack Miller, who's kicked out of KTM, he just said, this is it, my career's over, mate, I'm going back to Oz. But it looks like now he's going to get one of those satellite Yamaha rides uh, with uh, Prima. Because they want the experience, you know. And again, it's frustrating for the kids that can't get good through because teams still seem to think, well, I want an experienced rider or experienced driver to help us get points. So the youth, the youth doesn't get the chance. Tiff, back in the day with Honda and Yamaha when they were dominating, did you have many more Japanese drivers, riders? I didn't really follow MotoGP back in the day. Unless Barry Sheen was on a motorbike. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't really listening too much. Um, no, I did follow it. I remember the the the, the Rothmans, Hondas, and stuff. And uh, but it wasn't it wasn't so much on television. I don't think the UK come to think of it. It's probably why we didn't follow it. I mean, now with Susie and the, and the team, you know, we get so much more MotoGP on telly than we ever used to have. Harry Sheen was a huge name though in motorsport. Oh, yeah. growing up, Harry, Harry. him and Evil Knievel, two biggest names in, in on bikes. Both, both things eccentrics. <laughs> so all the other motorsport really was over over out of Europe. The USA we off the IndyCar, St. Louis. With St. Louis town, it's near. And they've now called the track Madison, but everyone knows it as the gateway, the one and a quarter mile egg shaped. Um, lots of controversy there, mainly involving willpower. The Aussie who is never at fault, never <laughs> his fault, willpower at all. Uh, uh, um, and he was involved in two of the big controversies of the weekend. There's this young star, David Malukas. He was a big name. I'm really keen to see how he gets on. He's 22 years old now. Uh, he had seven wins in uh, in Indy Lights uh, a couple of years ago, 2021. He still didn't win the championship, which was taken by Kyle Kirkwood, who came up to IndyCar ahead of him. Um, he was racing for his dad's team. They've they got money, but this is like all motorsport now. HMD, he raced for the Henry Malukas Motorsport. The IndyCar running their own private team uh, in 22, 23. He had a second and a third, I think, and a fourth. Um, looked like a great talent. So he signed for McLaren. He was going to be with McLaren this year. And when he I mean, fell off his flipping training bike, as these kids seem to do too much out on their mountain bikes, he he broke his wrist. What do you do too much? They're, they're, they're supreme athletes. They've got to do a lot. It's not they're like all those, your day. The MotoGP boys, they all go they down have to a Valentino fag and a beer. Ross's. 
they go to Valentino Rossi's private track, but they have all these dirt races because they love, I mean, it's good training to go on dirt, but of course they'll get carried away. All kids are going dirt race. They're all falling off and breaking their wrists and collarbones. Anyway, he busts about, his wrist. What about these these guys uh, on the weekend, or yesterday, from the billionaires uh, from um, the, the tech company? They've just they've just gone. They're, they're, they're dead. So oh, enjoy yeah. your life. You never know. They're billionaires on their yachts. And if you want to race business. an IndyCar, you can't do it with your broken Why not? wrist. Well, you, you can well, still you can't enjoy do your it. life. <laughs> If you, if you still enjoy your life, you can't <laughs> wrap yourself in cotton wool thinking... If you want, want to be a Grand Prix driver or IndyCar, you have to be careful with your body. Well, Otherwise, you, you lose your eye. Of course you do, so but you can still go for a bike ride. You shouldn't have to not go for... A, just do things that are less dangerous, <laughs> unnecessarily dangerous. <laughs> Going down a hill on a two-wheeled thing with very little <laughs> brakes is not a sensible thing to do. <laughs> it's like the Formula One drivers don't go skiing. When I was a kid, I didn't go skiing because yeah. that was always regarded as an ankle-breaking, wrist-breaking hot sport. <laughs> so you don't. Some things in life you have to sacrifice in order to get to where you want to go. So he was. So he lost his McLaren ride. This took him six months to get his broken wrist fixed, uh, and then he got a ride with Mayer Shank, who was a sort of a top-ish team. We've got Felix Rosenquist doing really well. But uh, poor old Tom Blomquist, the, the British driver, wasn't doing so well. He had a crash at Indy that dropped. So he got kicked out. So then we got Malukas in again. So he's now got a ride in a sort of Division 2 team. But he was having the best race of all at uh, St. Louis, Madison, Gateway, um, and was challenging for the lead uh, with willpower. And um, he went for the inside line. And I, <laughs> Power just pinched him down and pinched him down and pinched him down. He was blocked. He couldn't go further forward because Carl Kirkwood was about to be lapped, was right in front of him. And, and whilst Malukas is on the line, Power, eventually, as he was halfway past, hit him with his rear wheel, either on the side pod or the front one, at which bit he hit. So put poor old Malukas in the wall backwards, huge shunt. Yeah. Now Power's flipping in the Vs, like, why are you trying to overtake there, mate? That wasn't on, you know. Well, Malukas was saying, why haven't the stewards penalised him? Which they didn't. I'm surprised that didn't go, because literally... Um, you know, Malukas was on the white line at the apex and Power just pinched him, pinched him, pinched him until he hit him. Um, it's got to be pretty serious in NASCAR, hasn't it? Oh, sorry, IndyCar, to uh, get the stewards. Well, yeah. But anyway, so Malukas next. He's already signed for AJ Foyt next year because he's going to get paid. Um, so finally, Daddy's money doesn't isn't going to be spent on the boy and he's going to have a full-time ride with AJ Foyt, which isn't a front-running car, not as good as um, Mayor Shank, really, but um, Mayor Shank had to take money too. Anyway, so those two having a small incident, but Lucas was out, but uh, Pence, uh, Power survived. But it left Joseph Newgarden and Scott uh, McLaughlin, who were all Penske's. So Penske's dominated his flipping ovals, unfortunately. Um, so Malukas was doing so well to be in there. So Newgarden managed to overtake Scott McLaughlin by having a 5.1 second pit stop with his crew. They were doing a splash and dash. And it was so much better to watch than your <laughs> stupid one. What is your record now? 1.9? Yeah, 1.8. And a Formula 1, 1 yeah. car comes in, it just gets surrounded by people. You can't actually see what they're doing, and then it's gone again. That's very impressive, Whereas isn't it? That's very 5. impressive. 5.1 seconds. Only three seconds longer. Yeah. You've got four men with a wheel each and a yeah. gun each running out, brr, 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 putting a new wheel on. And it was you see the skill of the mechanic. Doing that job, it's it just adds it adds to the thrill to me. Oh, that's adds that's to impressive. Yeah, I get it. I get it. But also, isn't it just equally phenomenal that a team can change four wheels and get a driver out again in under two seconds? No, we've got twenty <laughs> people doing their job. No, of course it is. There's only a certain amount of fine out of time that you can take a wheel off and put it back on. So yeah, one point nine yeah, seconds. I, I I admire both of them. It's a incredible teamwork yeah. and lots of lots but of practice to watch, goes into that. To actually see it yeah, happening. It. Yeah, absolutely. I get it. Yeah, there must. It, and it's, it's a cool. fuel man at the same and you, time. And you hear it as well, fuel. don't you? It just yeah. sounds better. I don't know why that gun sounds better than the Formula One gun. It's just <laughs> lovely sound. Anyway, so Newgarden was now leading. The McLaughlin had been leading, and then there was his second thing for power that uh, Newgarden decided to have an incredibly slow restart. Now, apparently, when you're coming up, you must keep a constant speed before you go. So you do the lead car, you have to keep a constant speed. But, he, but his speed was so slow that it was almost hard to keep that slower speed. And the line was coming. They have to go single fire, which was not so dangerous to me. But they're all line astern. And somehow it went green, but 
but by then Power had already sort of got too close to the back of McLaughlin, so he backed off a bit. Then Rossi was right behind Power, went over the top of Rossi's of Power's rear wheels. Uh, so that put Power and Rossi out of the race. And so that was right on the start finish line. So Power's then out of the car. <laughs> when the leaders came back in the pit legs, they red flagged the race. He's up there flicking the V's at Newcart and saying, you know, you, you made a too slow restart and it was all your fault. Um, anyway, Newgarden yeah, he, won he, he, on the he, restart. He's, he's a bit like Marmite, isn't he? Um, and like you said, it's never his Wilbur. fault. Never, never his fault. Ever his fault. No, so never else. his fault. Chips on his shoulder. Big time. So Newgarden won again and McLaughlin was second. I don't know who came third in the end. Um, oh, it's a really good third. Linquist, the amateur, the young young rookie that doing nice. really came through to finish third. Um, so it's entertainment and controversy. Um, then there was the N India NXT, more controversy, where, of course, we had a front row with Louis Foster, this young British driver that's dominated the championship. But his Andretti teammate, Jamie Chadwick, managed to qualify second. 163 mile an hour oval. Jamie's really not just doing road courses well. She's now on the pace in ovals. Um, although she was 0.2 slower than Louis on pole. Uh, and the next five, with Jamie at the head of the five, were covered by 0.08 of a second. So the difference between second and, and sixth was was pretty tight. Um, but on about a second or third lap, I mean, Louis just disappeared from the start, and uh, Jamie dropped back a bit and was being attacked. And this Brazilian Chow Colette, who's already had a bit of controversy, I mean, just moved and got halfway past, and a great move went around the outside of her on turn three and four. And was sort of half a car length and decided to do the European style of racing, which he's been doing all his career, and just started moving over and Jamie moving over and moving over. But you're not allowed to do that in IndyCar. You follow a straight you're line. You're not allowed to do it any racing. Yeah, but they like... let them do it in Europe. This is what Senna started. This is where it all began. All this horrendous pinching people over in a straight line that uh, should be banned and stopped. Anyway, eventually Colette hit Jamie and took them both into the wall, put them both out of the race. I mean, just ridiculous. And he got a penalty for that, but didn't help Jamie. He was, you know, was doing a really good... It should have been a, a one-two finish for the two Andrettis. And uh, instead, it was just a Louis Foster demonstration. And obviously, the Andretti cars are pretty good. But, you know, all the talk, of course, is of Jamie Chadwick getting an IndyCar ride next year because he'll have a big sponsorship behind her. And Louis Foster said, well, what about me? I'm, 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 me? I'm winning all that. I'm, I'm, I'm leading the championship by quite some yeah. way. I'm and winning his races. His dad's helped finance all of his racing. And he's had to have financial support from his father's companies. And uh, But they can't afford to buy into IndyCar. He'll get a million dollars for winning the championship at NXT. They get the sponsorship. You have to use it to go into IndyCar. You don't get the money in the bank. So I, really I can't imagine to Louis Foster. a foreigner wins that very often, do they? I mean, uh, especially no, Brit. No, 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 it's, it's quite unusual. You know, it's great that Louis has done this. He sort of gave up on the European, you know, trade chase up to Formula 2 and he's put himself out there. And I oh, think he'd be really, he's quite aggressive, you know, when he has to be. And I think in IndyCar, you need that sort of style. And I really think he'd do well. Well, you've got, you got to say hats off as well to Jamie because, my goodness, we wrote her off at the beginning of the season and said, oh, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a learning season and, and yeah, she's going to yeah. get the back. And she did start at the back, but she's learned very, very quickly. She's fifth yeah. in the championship. So, yeah. yeah, big, big respect to her. We always need to drive, but to be able to drive amongst your peers and not be compared against a, a woman all the time, to be compared against everybody. That's yeah. a huge respect to, to Jamie. Yeah. And for doing it as well because... There was no hiding. There was absolutely no hiding uh, in this championship mm. for her. Where when you're against other ladies or females, then th that's your level. But uh, let's hope they're both in IndyCar next year. There's still quite a few seats going in IndyCar, so who knows? They might both be there next year, which would be so absolutely would, brilliant. Would you want to go into IndyCar, irrespective of what team, even if it was a rubbish team? Would you still want to go into IndyCar? Would you want to? Well, yeah, because you get experience, you know, yeah, for your I'd first year. Yeah. You know, you get in there and you get to go. You wouldn't stay in F2 um, if you go in Alpine, F1 or Haas or whatever. No, Haas is quite good no, at the moment. But... You, go, you go up as soon yeah. as you can. Um, so the NASCAR boys, they're also entertaining, although it happened to be last night instead of Sunday night because the rain came and the rain, they don't race the big ovals in the rain, especially when you're at Michigan. They do now the short tracks. They now introduce wet weather tyres. They're, they're getting there, but, you know, the 200 mile an hour, two mile oval... Um, with these great big heavy NASCARs. I think in qualifying, they're full throttle. Michigan's not very banked, I think it's about 18 degrees. And they're turning in, committed flat out at 200 miles an hour with hardly any aero. Um, and it, the whole weekend, we just showed 
if you're on the outside, you think, it, you know, for lap after lap, it looks just dull doddle. You're all just driving around, you know. There's not much overtaking. You know, there's not masses of overtaking because you're doing 200 miles an hour. So you get duels between two people, you know, try to overtake. And the trouble is when they get side by side, as happened early on in the, in the race, we had Larson and, um, I forget, we were side by side with him. Um, and then you get such a tow, you give such a huge tow to third place that he just drives past both of you. <laughs> but Hamlin, it was Hamlin and Larson were side by side. Anyway, the Miller man. But the, but, but the main thing is there were a couple of three incidents, which so just shows how hard it is that sport that people poo poo at. We had one guy in the race, Corey LaJoy, you know, on his roof at 200 miles an hour. You know, someone checked up in front. There was a slight bit of contact with the car in front he was battling with because they move. Uh, and the car got sideways at 200 and the wind, they have got these flaps now that desperately try to stop these cars from getting into these air, taking off. But he took off, ended on the roof. He's now sliding down the tarmac fringe of the track at 200 miles an hour. I wonder what the noise was like of your roof sliding on. Then by the time it hit them in the grass, it rolled. Anyway, he was fine. But then in the, in the race itself, after, as I said, um, it was Bubba Wallace that went by both Hamlin and Larson in this move when they got side by side, so it was a huge slipstream. So you've got Hamlin, you know, one of the stars, most experienced, brilliant drivers, trying to get by Bubba for lap after lap. And he just, he went down low and then he there, and then he comes back up the hill to get some line. He just gets behind Bubba, 200 miles an hour, 180 miles an hour they're averaging, gets a bit of bad aero, and he's lost it. You know, he's losing it. This is a superstar driver. He had this huge spin up the start, finish straight, you know, but didn't hit anything, but dropped down the field. Um, so that just shows what, what an edge they're on, you know, which people don't appreciate because it looks easy, they're going round and round for lap after lap, and nothing happens. But once they just overstep that mark, then it happened in the middle of the race with Carl Larson, you know, <laughs> the greatest driver on the planet, <laughs> perhaps. Um, and they'd had a restart where they, so often the, the leaders will pit for the tyres, but the pack from 10th to 20th will stay out to get track position. So there was one of these cases of a restart where the front 10 were all midfielders who had, hadn't stopped. And Larson was in the middle of the pack. And, uh, and he got pincered down, I think, another back straight somehow. And he just says he was trying to get back out in the middles of turns three and four to sort of get a bit of a run down the straightway. And he just lost it. All the aero was going on. And he says these the latest generation of cars, because they got aero, unfortunately, more aero underneath them than the cars previously. And with aero, you just can't get a big slip anger and catch it you know it gets past a certain degree and you're gone however brilliant a driver you may be so it's just you know it's just interesting that, that i got out of that race just to show to these you know doubters of nascar skills um, how on the edge they are and late, right later in the race, we then have one of these classic situations when kind tyler reddick was lead was winning he sorted it done it sussed it got the fastest car had about a two second lead and just like a week ago with austin dillon the yellows came out. He's, he's just about to cruise to victory. This is the, um, and the yellow came out because another former champion lost control. Martin Truex Jr. He's running about fourth, I think. You know, and he's, he wasn't catching anyone. He was just in the groove, trying not to be caught, trying to maybe edge towards the car in front, and just turning into tell he was turn one. You just saw it on board. He just a little bit of a tail waggle. He sort of caught the first one and then the second one. By the time he's now up by the wall, so he clobbered the wall with the rear of his tow car. I mean, he held it all in a straight line. But uh, NASCAR threw the yellows immediately. Reddit was complaining because there wasn't any damage on the track. So it was one of those times when you get a bit upset that um, your lead has just been stolen from you with two laps to win. But fortunately, this time, unlike the week ago, um, Reddit managed to make a good restart and won the race, which he deserved to win. So... Was it, was, it, was it windy? That's unusual for so many to lose control. No, I think it's just you're on an edge at two. You're cornering at 180 miles an hour, non-stop all day long. You know, and your tires are tires are grips going down and down. Um, it astonishes me how they overtake when they're going that fast. Because if you're doing a, a speed, you know, 180 miles an hour, for example, yeah. down the autobahn, you don't want to be moving <laughs> no, at all. But they're, they're, they're you yeah, know, they're, they're having to overtake. It's it's yeah. astonishing, really. But anyway, that win puts Reddick on top of the points because there's a points championship as well as the playoff championship. Yep. So Reddick and, and Larson's down in fourth now because, of course, he didn't score any points. We scored points, but you scored negative points. No, it works out. Ne low points at the back. Um, actually, before the finish, Kyle Busch, who's had a terrible year, 
Um, I think lots of people like he's a sort of one. He's rogues. He's a love hate man. Kyle Busch. He's always been booed as a bad guy, but he's won a race every year for nineteen years, and he's now had an awful season. He hasn't won one. But he got out, he only put two tyres on towards the end and popped out right in front of the leaders. And so but he led for about four or five laps before the, the fact that he didn't have four fresh tyres worked against him and uh, Reddick went past him. But uh, it was good to see Bush back at, up the front. So so I don't understand how NASCAR points work. Explain, because why... Well, you have a points, champ. It's just points. No, no, I understand that. But on the actual in the actual race, so... Uh... Byron has got 50 points, whereas Reddick's got 40 points for, for the weekend. How did that even happen? I don't know. I'm not looking at what you're looking at, so I don't know. Well, Reddick must have got more points than... Oh, there's, well, oh, there's playoff... Oh, because you get the stage win points. So this is playoff That's their points. whole weekend. That's their weekend yeah. points. So every time you win a stage, there's stage ending points. So there's two stages. There's three stages. So you get, you get points at the end of stage one, points at the end of stage two, and then points for the final results. So that is why you can get more so, points than the winner. So, so that, combined with the fact that they race virtually every single weekend, is why the leaders are on over 800 points so far <laughs> for this season. <laughs> well, now, the, the, apparently the points run until the end of the first three rounds of the playoffs, I think. Okay. Because the points champion gets what you might call tier playoff points. Does anyone get, ever get to 1,000 points before that happens? Well, <laughs> When the last 16 get into the playoffs after yeah. two more races, right, yeah. the, all the winners go straight through. Yeah. So it's 12 winners so far. Maybe 13 winners because Austin Dillon is appealing, getting kicked out for his outrageous driving last weekend, which was outrageous. So there are four going through on points alone at the moment. And two of those are just outside. You know, Ross Chastain and Bubba Wallace, the leading drivers, they're 17th and 18th at the moment. So two more races to go, but... Daytona next weekend is a lottery. Who wins that? Who crashes the most? So someone from nowhere could win Daytona and go straight through. Anyway, so then when the, when the playoffs start in two, after two more races, everybody goes back to zero points of those 16. But you've, if you've won bonus points for winning races, you get certain points you can carry through for being a race winner. Plus, if you're the points champion, you get more bonus points. That help too, you. Too confusing. I know. Well, it's simple when you're watching it and someone shows a table in front of you, it's dead easy. Uh, so, two more races to decide the, the 16 going through the playoffs. Drama builds. Commentary. What would you give the commentary scale of Great one commentary. Great commentary. First lap of the race, they don't talk. They just show the pictures. They don't start babbling through the first 20. By the and there's Reddick at the head of Tyler. You know, what, you know why? Shh, they probably cut up. to a commercial break. <laughs> no. and they got no one to stand in anyway What's I next think week? it's very entertaining we still got Aussie supercars the only other thing oh, going yeah. on were down yeah. under Aussie supercars they were down in Tasmania it wasn't Tasmania it wasn't, Tas it wasn't Tasmania I thought it was Perth um, no it was the Perth no it was the Simmons Plains Raceway which is Tassie well, I think it's Tasmania, but it's not on the what's the island the big island that's Tasmania's the big Tasmania, island yeah yeah Hobart where Tasmania. the other track is so I don't know if Tasmania's got a bit of land that's on land. Anyway. No, it is on Tasmania. I get it's it confused. Bloody, Simmons Plain is yes. Perth. I was right. It was Perth. First time I was right. Not often. Well, I always get confused. I always think the MotoGP track is on Tasmania, but it's not. That's the one I get mixed up. No, Simmons Plain is uh, Perth. It's on it Tasmania. Was, Absolutely. A, what are you, no, Perth's Perth. on the West Coast. It, yeah, it's, uh, it's far. No, no, Simmons Plain is on Tasmania. Definitely know that. Simmons Plain Raceway is Perth. Is is fourteen eight seven two Midland Highway, Perth, uh, Perth, Tasmania. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say, I think you'll find there's two two Perths. <laughs> anyway, Simmons Plain Raceway. We've been there since nineteen sixty nine. It's one of the most used supercar tracks. Um, the Chevy versus Ford battle seems to be a real level pegging now. Finally, all this balance of powers and stuff, the two seem to be absolutely head-to-head. -head. Uh, there was a winner piece. Chevy won the first race, Nick Perkatz, and Ford won the second race with Cam Waters. Um, there was a bit of controversy because um, Thomas, was it Thomas Randall uh, knocked one of the championship runners, Brock Feeney, the Red Bull boy, knocked him off in the second race and dropped from fourth to 16th. So... Feeney's been his drop away. His teammate, Will Brown, still leads the championship, Red Bull boy, Chevy. 
Uh, he had a seventh and a second in Tasmania. But Chaz Mostert now, the leading forward, splits the two Red Bull Chevys in the championships. And Mostert is now second in the championship. And he had a second and a fourth. So it's all to play for now. The Fords mm. are coming back in Aussie supercars. Um, and I don't know where the next round is. Entertaining as always, but obviously I don't watch it because I don't know how you see it in England. It's a shame because it's a great series. So next, next week? weekend, uh, well, Dutch Grand Prix, off we go to Zandvoort. And um, no former two, no former three. Uh, the Academy ladies are back. They've got oh, two races, one on Saturday night, one on Sunday. So I'm sure Abby Pulling will be delighted to uh, move away from Formula 4 GB, where she's having a very tough time to get into the top 10 at the moment. She'll look forward to going back to a bit of glory on the podium with the superstars of the Formula 1 world. Uh, uh, where really only Dorian Pan is on her pace. Who's won, um, the mo- who's won the most amount of Dutch Grand Prix ever? Hopefully Jim Clark, who won yeah. quite a few. Poor, oh, yeah, Jim Clark. And then loads on three, including Max Verstappen. Um, but amazing weekend. There's a Porsche Super Cup race on Sunday morning. There are only four races. And this is my despair at Formula oh. 1, where it's just, you know, Paddock Club have got tours of the track, pit lane tours, there's shows going on there are four races if you're a normal fan in the dunes the famous dunes where the fans gather to watch you know race after race after race they will get one one academy race at five o'clock on saturday evening they'll get one academy race on sunday morning when they'll be queuing to get in one porsche race sunday morning and a grand prix four races wow so if you're a fan going out there um I wonder what you think about just seeing four races. Obviously, we hope um, there'll be a good battle at the Grand Prix. Should be a Grand Prix. Difficult to overtake, a bit of a go-kart track. Even with the banking thing they introduced, it still didn't really cause much overtaking. So it's going to be a bit of a procession. But um, qualifying will be very important. There should be some dodgy weather. Because we've got dodgy weather this weekend in England. There's a lot of blustery showers coming over. So who knows? Um, hopefully Harry King can win the Porsches Abby Pulling can win them well they got a hot favourite the Dutch have got a hot favourite in the Porsches as well the they got championship leader yeah, no. exactly nice to have Britain Britons could win all the races in Holland <laughs> for a weekend IndyCar go to the awful Portland track it's the only last uh, road course that they've got they've only got ovals left in the IndyCar championship apart from Portland which is such a rubbish circuit that Formula E goes there which shows how bad it is the only interest in Portland is all the sh- crashes that are going on in the first corner going to the stupid chicane. And after that, it's, I mean, it's quite fun to watch, but overtaking is really tricky, which is I a just, shame. I just looked at the weather for Zandvoort. It's a bit iffy up until Sunday morning, then it's nice on Sunday. Mm-hmm. So quality, quality if, should be well, interesting. Well, good for qualifying, the most, that's the most important part. So yeah. qualifying is a bit iffy. Uh, World Superbikes in Hungary, where... Raz Gatlioga will doubtless win three more races. Um, <laughs> the NASCARs are at Daytona. So that's when they all go around at 200 miles. They're all full throttle all the time. I mean, it's just a ridiculous form of motorsport in a way, but it's just fascinating to watch and fascinating to see how the, the guys move up to the field slowly but surely. And then the, the, the all wait for the huge crash that wipes out half the field and then they get going again. So um, NASCAR's at Daytona, but of course, back at home, BTCC, get to Donington, the Midlands track where you can come from Scotland, Wales, everywhere, Ireland, Cornwall. Good track to and, watch, um, from, watch at as yeah, well. You can see a lot. It's usually good racing too. Yeah, mm. Usually it's good racing, lots of overtaken uh, chances at Donington. Uh, of course, there'll be the tyre stacks to up, upset the commentary team if anyone hits them. But I still get annoyed. I mean, we'll watch it this weekend. And the tyre stack will be so far inside. Unless they, they might be on the long track. I haven't looked that up. I don't know if they're on the short track. The tyre stack is so far inside. They still have all four wheels on curbs where they straight line the chicane. Why don't they move the tyre stack out? They're all apex on the tyre stack anyway. So move the tyre stack to the edge of the track. I'm, I'm with you. If it's a if it's a street circuit, you have a brick wall. So yeah, it's a tire but, the, stack. The, but also you, because the the, the chicanes were designed almost to create overtaking points. You know, the more braking, you had to slow the cars down. But of course, the more you allow them to straight line it, the less braking you get, you know, the less overtaking you get. Mm. Anyway, Donington's the place to be. Otherwise, on the telly, watching a Grand Prix, but no Formula 2 and no Formula 3. That's it. Thanks, Thanks for sir. watching. So that's, quite, that's quite long, considering there's no Formula 1. No, yeah.
See, that's There's plenty of sport around the world. Argue, you, you argue non-stop. It's like, oh, my, 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 uh, Carl Larson. It's you coming Carl up Larson. with stupid Carl Larson factoids. And what was the thing about watches was your See best you next bit week. of news. Bye, everybody. See you next week. <laughs>